I am truly honored, my good brother, to present you with this Lifetime Achievement Award presented to Dr. Edward W. Crosby today, November 8th, 2008. Come on up, good brother. executive board uh, currently for thinking of pulling me out of the office at home looking at a football game. <laughs> but in any case, I'm glad to be here because there are some things that some of you may not know about uh, the Black United Students that need to be conveyed to all of those students who come in. Because as I've uh, met different uh, executive boards over the 40 years that I've been here, it seems that one of the things that we, as workers at this university, and as students, as students at this university, that we fail to do is convey our history to those young people who come onto this campus. Because the Black United students have been the creators of three organizations on this campus. Three academic organizations on this campus. All of which were designed to help black students and indeed black people realize their dreams be they educational dreams, be they societal dreams, be they uh, economic uh, <laughs> dreams, but the Black United Students have done that. You know, when I came and joined Larry Simpson here in 1969, I didn't realize that this would be here 40 years later. I got I didn't believe I'd live 40 years later. But in any case, one of the things that uh, the provost at the time asked me was uh, this. He said, Dr. Crosby, would you like to have tenure? And I uh, very arrogantly said, no, because the students will tenure me. And indeed, the students did tenure me. Because as I uh, came through that first year, I met a uh, man who was at the University of Pittsburgh at the time, Chief uh, Fela Shawande. And he said to me, Crosby, what you need to do is clothe yourself with the young people. Clothe yourself with the young people. Because I, uh, I was a hellion on the campus. I came here not to build a standard department, but rather to build an entirely different department. Because there was no model that I could follow. Because what was it? We were in the forefront of creating Black Studies Departments. So I uh, had to fight the university off, and I started fighting them when I turned tenure down. Incidentally, when I walked out of the provost's office, I slapped myself. <laughs> because, damn it, fool. <laughs> that was the way you can keep a job. <laughs> but in any case, but in any case, it was that whole uh, recognition that it was students that were going to do this work. All I could do here was to guide them, to tell them or suggest to them which ways they should go. Now, let me say this to you about students. They never follow good advice. They always listen and then follow their own advice. 
And that was the strength of the Black United Students. Because as I said to you, there's no organization on this campus, and indeed, I believe, no black student organization that has remained on a campus without changing its name, its mission, and everything else for 40 long years. Black students are a model, the Black United students that is, are a model that all students' organizations should, I believe, uh, follow. Because uh, they have shown the determination and the will to create. Okay, to create. There's a saying that goes, those that think and create are worth more than 10,000 who think but create nothing. And that's the hallmark of the Black United Students. So I thank you for recognizing me, but uh, really, you chose the wrong person to be recognized. Because there's someone else that should have been recognized, and that's my wife. <laughs> there's, a, there's a thing about wives, you know? Uh, they do the work and husbands get the glory, <laughs> all right? And that's the way it has been with her. Because uh, those of you may not know, but she volunteered full-time labor to this department without uh, pay and worked, indeed, longer hours than those women or persons, men and women, who were paid. So you see, uh, had it not been for her, I couldn't have been. So I, and indeed, she's been with me now 52 years. Uh, and I have promised that she'll be with me 52 additional years. But in any case, let me uh, follow her orders and uh, leave this stage, but I want to do one last thing. That I said it was my wife that uh, brought me here. I want to say this though, that had it not been for the Black United Students in 1969, this could never have happened. Could never have happened. I remember being interviewed on this campus too for this position, position of chairman, no, of the director of the Institute for African American Affairs. It had no name then, that was my first fight with the university. But in any case, uh, when I walked into the uh, uh, <clears throat> interview room, I noticed that there were 10 black students in the room. I had never been in, uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, interviewed for a position on a university campus and there were more black students in the room than there were administrators. All right? So I noticed at that very point who it was I had to address, not the, the administrators, because the power in the room had to be in the hands of the students, and indeed it was. In fact, I turned my chair to talk to the students. Because you see, on any university campus, the power resides in the students on that campus. That's where the power is. And don't y'all ever forget it. You are the power at Kent State University. If you only exert it. If you only exert it. Because you see, without you, Kent State University can uh, 